In this video we're going to have a look at some basic transformation techniques including scaling, rotating, shearing and a bunch of others. So we'll start, up by, we'll start off uh, with the example of rescaling this um, artboard um, which I'll increase to be an A1 from an A3 which it currently is. So I selected the artboard tool and now I'm going to go up to the width and double the number. This is um, just a quick way of turning the A3 into an A1. So if you double both the numbers, so two, sorry, that'll be 594. And I'll put the X value at zero. And I'll press V to bring back my selection tool. And I'll zoom out and you can see there's our work. But we need, if I select our artwork, to double in size as well. So to do that, there's a couple of ways. I'm going to show you how to use the Object Transform menu first. So go up to Object, down to Transform, and then across, and, oop, and then across, and you'll see a bunch of different options. We'll start off uh, with a Scale option. So we have two different options. We can scale it uniformly or non-uniformly. Non-uniformly refers to um, separating the horizontal and vertical scaling proportions. So you could remain it uh, could remain the same height although you could double the um, scale of the uh, horizontal if you wish and you have the option of scaling strokes um, and effects so for example a 0.1 stroke if you double in size and you have this option selected will then become a 0.2 I'm going to leave that selected because it suits my particular purpose I can I, I also want to scale it uniformly, so I'm going to put 200 because that's the scale by which we increase the size of the um, artboard. And then I'll select the preview. And you can see, if I move this out of the way, that is a, an appropriate size. Um, also to mention that I will be able to keep an eye on what my scale of drawing is. If it was 1 is to 100 before, now it would be 1 is to 50. Okay. Now I can also click the copy button, but because I don't want to keep the original, I'm going to make it a transformation instead of a copy. Okay, there we go. Now holding shift and pressing the arrow keys, or holding the arrow keys down, I'm just going to nudge this into the correct place. It'll be quicker actually just to click and drag. Okay. Okay, let's see how I would have done this just uh, without the menu tool. If I select the artwork again, You'll see that a whole bunch of um, control points, if I have the selection tool pop up, these uh, large white boxes, um, well small depending on how you look at it, around the corners and sides of the um, selection box. Now that's uh, with the selection tool active, not the direct selection tool, the selection tool, I can use these boxes to transform the uh, all the geometry inside, um, even though it is individual geometry. Um, in many different ways, scaling it uh, non-uniformly, which is as you see here, and you can have a look right next to the cursor. It's telling me exactly what width and height I'll be, um, I will end up at. And if you'll remember our constraints, if I hold Shift and zoom up, uh, move up and down, it locks the uh, ratio and scales uniformly. Okay. Now. To undo that, I'll press Control and Z. Or if you want, you can go to the Edit and Undo or Redo options. Okay. So selecting again. If oops, if I zoom in and ho and move around the outside of those points, you'll see I get a double-ended, rather bent arrow. And that, if I click and drag, allows me to rotate the. Uh, there you go, the geometry, the uh, object, and you'll see I'm also being offered a an angle um, in the um, little bo uh, text box next to the cursor. You can use all snapping tools uh, when making these transformations. Um, and if I were to grab one of the side ones, it allows me to scale along one axis only, so vertically and horizontally, and it starts from the opposite side of the box from which you are dragging. Okay, I'll select off. Now we're going to have a look at some of the other options and to do that I'm going to start by drawing a line which could represent 
uh, some bracing across the inside of this wall. I'll press V to get my selection tool so I can have a look at the properties and I will just select a different color for the stroke. These are editing stroke properties you'll learn in a different video. Okay, so there's our bracing. Now I want to create a bracing um, since it's cross bracing I want to basically reflect this um, this line across the horizontal or vertical plane. So I'll go back up to my object menu, go to my transform menu and see there is a reflect option. Now you'll see we have our preview selected so it's showing us what that reflection will look like. That's quite suitable but because we're after a symmetrical reflection both vertical and horizontal do exactly the same thing. Often in your situations, uh, different different situations, you might find only one of them is required. And you can do an angle. So if I do 45 degrees, it's not exactly what we're after. So, And I, I'm after a copy, so I will click copy. There we go. All right. So if we select both those geometries, and I go up to Object, Transform, um, and I want to give it a bit of a thickness. So I want to copy them. But I want to copy them, uh, we'll say horizontally, or vertically, we'll say. I want them to move up by one millimeter. And I want to see what that's going to look like. So it's going to move down. We don't want that. Let's see if we can move them. So if I press minus, it'll send it in the other direction. And we'll make it smaller. We'll make it 0.2 of a millimeter. OK. Oh, oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to make a copy, so I'll just go back. Minus 0 0.2 and copy. Okay, so at the scale at which this drawing is going to be printed, we might not see this, but you can see I've created two wires with a thickness, and if I wanted to edit them subsequently. I can select the geometries and using my arrow keys just nudge them down. So there we go, a bit better thickness. Okay, now for the next few examples I will use a square for the sake of uh, convenience. And I'll just get that square in the center so it looks like it's meant to be there. Okay, now I'm going to try rotating this square, but I want to rotate it so that it creates an array of squares. So if I go, and we could use the array function, but I'm going to use this, uh, the rotate function for the moment, and the transform again tool. So um, you'll be familiar with this uh, system. We just type in our angle, and it shows us what it's going to look like. Turn it on and off, you can see it there. And I'll click copy. So that's what I want. But I'm, uh, I'm interested in creating an array, a pattern of these. So rather than go to the rotate, function over and over again. I'll go, I'll have my box selected, I'll go to Object, Transform, and see Transform again. Um, shortcut is Control D. So if I click that, it does the same transformation, rotates it by 15 degrees. But if I hold Control D, press Control D a few times, I can do exactly the same transformation several times. In fact, if I select all the boxes, go Object, Transform, Rotate, and go 5 degrees. Oops. Object. Always forget to press the copy. 5 degrees and click copy. And then hit it again with Control D. We'll see a rather complete pattern. Okay, there are a few other transformation tools uh, you will use. Um, one of the other basic ones, if I select the um, new geometry is to go to the shear transformation. And if I put a 45 degree shear in and click preview, you'll see that shear s essentially takes the, horiz uh, the top and the bottom, and uh, because we are doing it on the horizontal, and distorts it. But uh, that's something you can play with. Um, now I've uh, reduced the, um, I've undone some of the, some of the um, rotations before, transformations, and I've added a fill to these boxes uh, so I can demonstrate the application of the 
arrange function. Now all geometries sit in a hierarchy, um, one on top of the other, and you'll learn more about this in the layers video. However, if I want to set one geometry to sit behind another, I can select that geometry, or multiple geometries, and go up to Object, down to Arrange, and here are my options. I can bring it forward, I can bring it to the front, I can send it to the back, so I can send it backwards, and it now sits behind the geometry directly behind it. Or I can go back, Object, Bring Forward, and it's forward again. So quite useful when things aren't sitting quite uh, the way they should, or blocking each other.